over the over the bridge. This is really cool looking. Okay, look out over this. You have a really nice view on the left. Hey everybody, how's it going? I just wanted to show you this uh, toy here. This is an uh, electric bike, Yuba Mundolux. This is uh, the new version of the one that uh, went on fire. So the difference here from the other one is that instead of using that unit pack power garbage that I just recently learned, not only set my bike on fire, but actually set this entire dude's house on fire. I'm gonna leave a link down below. This blew up his whole house, it makes me very sad. Uh, these batteries, here, they have 98 cells each and they have 99 fuses in them. So these are EM3 EV batteries. They have a temperature limit, temperature cutoff for high and low temperature. Every single cell in this battery has a fuse in it. So there's 98 cells in here, there's 99 fuses because I, there's another fuse to my knowledge on the output of the, in, of the entire pack in addition to the cells, uh, each cell having its own individual fuse which is really cool. They take forever to ship and also they only sell smaller ones so that's why I got the unit pack power originally. So to make up for the fact that they're smaller there's two on each side instead of one. Each one of these batteries has a nice sleeved XT90 uh, nicely crimped with those waterproof, water-resistant kind of crimps that have that, that three-to-one heat shrink on on them that oozes out that 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 uh, that adhesive kind of glueish material to keep the liquid from getting in. Uh, the all the grounds are going to a bus bar up here. This bus bar is a nice little cushiony purple thingy below it, so that it's not just lying straight on the metal of the bike and is tied down. And it also has this you know, silicone over here 
uh, to keep it, any liquid from getting on it. So this has all been nicely silicone treated. All the batteries have their grounds going here on that bus bar, and all the positives are going to a fuse. So in addition to the fact that every single cell in here has a fuse, and then the output has a fuse inside the battery, I, I put a fuse there anyway, just because. These are, these are some nice liquid-resistant fuse holders over here. So each battery's got a fuse on it. And that is then going to... Uh, two bridge rectifiers here. So before I think I used a 100 amp 1000 or 1200 volt bridge rectifier. This time since I have five batteries instead of three there's two three-phase bridge rectifiers there and the outputs are combined over here. So each one of those I believe is a 15 or 1700 volt 150 or 170 amp bridge rectifier. Neither of those is, uh, is ever going to be used more than 90 amps if ever. I think like my peak today between all, both of them was 55 or 58 and they are attached to a G-Drive heatsink over here with a nice little thermal pad. So I tried, you know, like the putting about 900 or 1,000 watts while charging into this for several hours. The heatsink barely got warm, and the diode bridges themselves were nice and cool. So there's, there's really no heat there. And when I was on the road, I tried actually putting three or 4,000 watts into the motor and then stopping and going on the side of the road. This was cool. So that little G-Drive heatsink is doing its job, and that's mounted to a MacBook case, which I very, very, very happily drilled a bunch of holes to. There's really nothing more exciting than drilling through the Apple logo and the copyright on the bottom of a MacBook case. That's a phase runner. These are really awesome. It's a nice little third-party controller that you can get from ebikes.ca. They're a great vendor. Their customer service is exceptional. They care about quality. Uh, second to none in customer service, in my opinion. They're a really good vendor. And that phase runner is also attached to a G-Drive heatsink, which is attached to a MacBook enclosure, which is then attached to the actual casing. That is my blinker for my um, for my my turn signals up there. That is the over here. This is a bus bar for the 12 volt line, and this is the bus bar for the grounds of the 12 volt line. And again, as you can see, that has been nicely um, what's the word there uh, siliconed over to make it water resistant. That's my DC to DC converter, and this is where I can plug in a sixth battery if I ever wanted a you know another one. So that, that this is also a nice little battery. Uh, this over here is a phone charger in there. It has been nicely siliconed so that it does not, you know, rust up or anything if it winds up raining. This is all the wiring going up here, nicely sleeved. And up here, so you've got a turn signal. Like that, so you got turn signals back there. They turn. I should get bigger ones at some point. Those are just something I had in my office. Got my light switches. These lights are amazing. And I got my horn, which I'm not going to use now because that would be in a dick. Got my bell. Yay. Got my key switch. This is my key switch. I kind of wish that they didn't have the wire sleeved with the wire for the key switch over here so I wouldn't have to rip it open. This is a cycle analyst. This thing is awesome. That's my key switch and this is for the charger. So if it's raining, I'm not going to have my USB-C cables get corroded from having voltage going through them. So I have the so that, that, that's for the phone chargers. This is a wireless charger and a phone holder. So if you have a phone that wirelessly charges, you can put it in there. It's got a little thing on the back. Uh, this DC to DC and it is also fused on the input. So if this thing shorts, it doesn't kill any of my system. In addition to all the batteries having their own fuses, that has a fuse. And so does the charging port as well have a fuse. So this is my, this is my mirror. This is my holder for my little video rig here. This is the magnet for, so that the thing can tell how fast it's going. This is the um, different fork. So the fork that comes with this thing sucks. It's uh, no suspension, so your balls just get destroyed. So this is a nice little Manitou suspension fork. I think it's a Manitou Markor. And I also got rid of that garbage uh, bar. It comes, with, it comes with this bar that comes out like this. I don't know how, how the hell you're supposed to ride a bike with like the bars like this. It's rubbish. So this is a nice straight bar. And uh, that is that. So this is also really cool. You can check out the stats on the screen over here. Look at this. Watch this. Cycle analyst. Eh, eh. So you, I could use 20 amp hours today. Now, I wasn't very efficient since I was going on some roads where you, you kind of had to go like 25, 35 to keep up. So watt hours per mile wasn't great. Also, Eric was on the back. So I got about 37.9 watt hours a mile. So I used 1,100 watt hours to go... It looks like I put a max of 54 amps in it today. Let's see. This is cool. You can see the temperature, 
this thing is wrong because it, it, I, I turned it on and off again. My max temp today, I think I went up to like 50 or 60 Celsius. Uh, yeah, my trip today was 29.4 miles, but I also reset it, so it means that after doing 20. So I did a total of about 50 miles on this run, and there was no fire. The last time I did a run of that that long, it was a fire because unit pack power. But this thing's really cool. And uh, one of the things that I like about this, I remember when my last one went on fire, I, I kind of felt like sad, shit, shitty inside and all that. And Erica said that I should try to rebuild it. And I said, why? And she goes, well, if you honestly didn't do something wrong and, you know, you just got screwed over by a company, you shouldn't let them take away the thing that makes you happy. And you shouldn't let, you know, you, you've probably had people screw you over before many, many times. And, you know, you just you just get up and rebuild. You've done that with your business over and over and over again. So why would you not do it with your hobby that you actually enjoy? And she, my, she asked me, you know, what made my other bikes that didn't blow up with the EM3 V batteries different from this one and asked me, you know, some questions about it. And th literally the next day she jumped on my other bike with me that I have the EM3 V battery on with the, with the rear seat and rode around with me and said, I'm not, you know, just don't, don't let them take up space in your head or don't let a shitty experience ruin your life or ruin your, your, your hobby. And I can imagine, you know, girlfriends that would probably say, I can't believe that happened. How dare you have that hobby? That's a terrible hobby. It's just, I mean, like, it's just so nice to actually have someone who's encouraging and doesn't, like, kick you while you're down when they kind of have, you could kind of understand if they would kick you while you're down. But that, that's, that's really nice, and I appreciate that very much. You know, you read all the time on these audio forums about people where they can't even buy a, you know, a half-decent stereo that they want, even if it costs, like, 1% of their yearly income because they're, they're, they're not allowed to and there's talk like the spouse acceptance factor and all this kind of stuff and like the slightest thing happens or like they're carrying the speaker in and they get in trouble because there's a minor scratch on the floor as a result of it and it's just ugh, awful so like the the ability to actually enjoy your hobby and have someone who encourages you to enjoy your hobby even when that hobby you know after getting screwed sets your your door on fire is really a, a privilege and a gift that i appreciate and you should appreciate too if you're in that type of relationship she's a great girl this is uh waterproofed a little bit of where it goes into the bbs hd it's a lucky chain ring right here I like this thing nice the cool thing is if you really wanted to if you really wanted to go insane you could put like another one two three four five six seven eight so right now i think the range on this if you were to ride like a lunatic probably 110 120 miles if you were to ride like a normal person probably 180 or 200 miles so you could probably take a vacation down to Cape May with this which should oh, also the seat has suspension on it this is not the stock seat beautiful anyway I figure I might as well show you some some footage of it of it of uh, it driving and uh, yeah that's about that <laughs>